Good morning, morning. everyone. How are you all going out there? This is Huge. a business as usual show. Yeah. Huge week of sport. And one man who is sitting right alongside me is a very, very, very happy camper today. Tell us why, Liam. Tipperary won the hey, Division Tipperary. 3 Championship in I the NFL. So. Up the Tipperary. Up to the Division Come 2. On, Tipperary. That's the big story. <laughs> That's yep. the big news of the week. No, we just strangled bigger. a leprechaun there, by the way. <laughs> nothing uh, bigger than that. Nothing bigger than that. Uh, how are you going to top Tipperary winning? I mean, that oh, is huge. That's, that's huge. Absolutely Irish destroyed news. them. A nine-point win as well. Oh, Demolished I know. Them Demolished them. Demolished them. End. I mean, this is huge. I mean, I can't believe this isn't the number one story no, in Australia no. right now. We're in the world in that in that regard. It should be Division Three as well. Division, division Three is the best division. Division Three. It's better than Division Two and One yeah. put together. It's like Division Three, man. Come on. But we are going to mention uh, just a small result. You know, nothing, nothing too big. There, there was a team. They wear purple. Oh. They are a very proud side. Haven't had the best couple of years. But on the weekend, uh, they had a pretty notable win, would you oh, have to say? Did, did Fremantle did Was it the Fremantle win? Dockers? Did they win? I, I, I couldn't notice. I don't know. I, I just don't know. have no idea. For all those people out there, if <laughs> I, to, to give you a visual representation, we have a man who's practically naked to the bone, I wearing, like the wearing, purple, wearing purple underwear, and he is a very, very happy man. <laughs> oh, at the Se- Dockers. Security are, <laughs> are waiting alongside. Anything could happen here. Give Bart a, a 10 year man. contract. Oh, Let's get him out of the boys. Get him out of Give Griffin Logan. Your ten-year contract. Oh. Now I, I just got to say one thing, just real quick. They, not only congratulations for beating the uh, the reigning premiers, but what about the haircuts at the Fremantle Dockers? I think that deserves a, that deserves three brown low votes just alone. Like how much how much long hair is there? It is ridiculous. McCarthy's McCarthy's doing a thing where he's proving a point oh, that God. you don't need to be good looking to get good looking women if you play football. <laughs> it's, I, I don't know. It's like an uppercut. It's almost like something you'd he see in the two, army, but then he has like a two things in his head. Some kind of sumo wrestling kind of um, ponytail coming out and the back. And that moustache, though, he is oh, oh, oh gee, it's, one he he he's like Cameron Ling looking here. I, I I would love to 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 dob him as the the wild thing. He is he is the next wild thing. <laughs> uh, he is he's unbelievable. But it was a big round of sport. There, were, it, this was the round of upsets in the AFL. This was the it big was. round of upsets. No one really expected Collingwood to go over to Sydney and beat the Swans. No one expected the Gold Coast Suns to thrash the No Hawks. one expected the Blues, the Blues to get up over the Bombers. Yeah, well, let's, let's not Can't go into that too Blues. much. But but I think that's pretty obvious because Essendon can't play wet weather footy. If it's dry, I back us in. But no, nah, no synergy at the moment. But the showdown was huge. And we are from Tigerland. And Tigers. 3-0. and 3-0. No one would have expected this. The yellow this. and black army are as cocky as they ever have been. Oh, yeah. And there's one man who's absolutely leading that side. It's Daniel Rioli. It's another Rioli. Oh, it's how another delicious. Delicious Rioli. And during that game, oh. I remember going to my little brother, me and my little brother, talking like, yep. this year, he, he's, he's tasty, you know, he's, he's, he's nice. Tasty. He's but delicious. then he gets the ball, bamboozles a few players, and goes from tasty to absolutely Ooh, delicious. Yes. It was beautiful. And also, we're going to be recapping some of the NRL as well. The grand final rematch was on, and it was the same kind of pain for the Storm, unfortunately. And we're also going to talk a bit of tennis. Oh, get him out, Kyrgios. The Aussies are flying. Get him out, The Aussies are flying. And Nick Kyrgios finally kept it all together, and wow. The Aussies are absolutely flying in the Davis Cup. So we've got a huge show on for you guys today. And, of course, when we get back from this song, we're going to be talking about the Purple Haze, the Fremantle Dockers, the man in purple. The men are doing an incredible job. And, wow, I'm excited. Yes. They're off the bottom of the ladder. More here on the Sports Desk on Sin, 90 points. We are back with the Premiership winning Fremantle oh, Dockers. Get, get around it. them, boys. Get off it. Get around them. Get off it. <laughs> Come on. All right, yes. No, it was a big round of AFL football this week, and we must start on a very big Friday night, and it was Collingwood, 11-14-80, defeating the Swans, edging them out by one point, 11-13-79, and it was Buddy's big game. And he did not have a big game. And he did not have a big game at all. I tipped him in, though. He looked like, halfway through the second, I'm thinking to myself, he looks like he kicked 10. He Honestly, he is... He's a man. He's an absolute He's a, He is. He was a man. He is a man. He's a man. He is a man. He is a man. Last time I checked. He's came a long way since crashing his Volkswagen. He has <laughs> came a very, very long way. And since then, he has just risen to the top. And he will be one of the greatest forwards of all time. But uh, it wasn't his, wasn't his game. And uh, the Pies were very, very impressive. 
Yes, their GWS players have doing really well. I tell you, Adam Will Hoskin Elliott and yes. Adam Trillo. Adam Trillo, um, they they've got a marvelous team. Um, and even a man who goes under the radar, GWS player as well, Will Hoskin Elliott has been very, very impressive this year. Mm. Kind of came not on the biggest money, came to the club, changed his haircut so he doesn't stand out as much, and uh, as a result, he goes under the radar from kicked a lot of sides. Kicked the match-winning goal. And he kicked, he kicked a beautiful goal from outside 50. And, uh, yeah, I think he's I think he's ready to deliver. And, um, you know, 26 goals from 20 games with GWS in 2014. Since then, wasn't really cited, and he's came back, and he's been huge. I do. One thing that annoyed me about this game was the last, the last um, 30 seconds... Mm. I'm sorry. Sydney kicks the goal. One point ball game. I can't remember who marked. He marked it just outside 50. Mm. And instead of... And he waited as well. He waited until the um, the play played on. And instead of, you know, having a whole bunch of Sydney players inside Mm. the 450, he kicked it to a two-on-one with Sam Reid. Yep. What are the Sydney players thinking? They've gone from being grand finalists to being absolute Muppets. And I think this is a problem with the Sydney Swans. You look, um, particularly last year, they lost a couple of very, very close games. The one to Richmond was unforgivable. Just their structure completely fell down. I think the one against Hawthorne as well, where Surioli kicked the match-winning goal. Oh, he's delicious. They, or, he's delicious. They also fell down on their faces there as well. So I think um, so Sydney... The as well, with I think, um, Joe Hannison. That's right. I think Sydney needs to find ways to, to, you know, win a game in a close position. They seem to... Players like Dean Tower, they, they let him down a couple of times last year. And this year, just the whole team themselves just kind of dropped their heads. They just weren't themselves. Um, the, qualif- the qualifying final against the Giants as well. That's right. As that's well right. as the grand final, which Lucy's probably very fond of. Yeah, I love that game. <laughs> 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 but, I mean, th- this from Sydney. Um, Josh Kennedy was not prolific. He wasn't, not, didn't not have a big game. game. And this is his second week in a row where he's been pretty quiet. And, uh, you know, new skipper, um, you know, we're not obviously going to put too much pressure on him as yet, but he's got to stand up a little Actually, bit Actually, speaking of Sydney, before we go to the next game, mm. I've got an issue with the footy show. The footy show? Apart from the fact that they're terrible The new now. look footy show, Liam. Okay, doesn't everyone have an issue oh, with the no, footy show? I think we've had issues for the footy show for a long time. <laughs> um, Get around again, game. Alcoholism is a very serious problem, yep. without a doubt. Mm-hmm. Um, Dan Hannaby decided to... Um, Give up alcohol, just to you know be healthier mm. and that. Good on him. And then the footy I've show uh, bashed him about it, and then goes, "We should find a way to get him back on alcohol," <laughs> which I thought was a disgusting yeah. taste from I the footy show. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I just think, especially uh, Dan Hadbury was never addicted to alcohol. He was not an alcoholic, but no, no, he loves you know, a frothy every now. Yeah, and then. he enjoys a nice frothy. But I just thought, you know, someone's trying to do this life-changing thing, mm. and they're bashing him for it. Because someone, he's not, yeah, because yeah. he's not playing the oh, best he that he has. Played not bad on the weekend, though. but then he did come back yeah. and play pretty good in the weekend. The That's first right. two games he was quiet, but yeah, it's such a and that just really turned me off the foot. Any hope I had of watching the, the footy show, the really problem is, I think yeah. always with the footy show, they've they've been etched in this kind of Australian larrikinism, and and they're all very much based around this quite crude humour. A lot of beer jokes, you know. Mm. Billy Brownless loves a good frothy, and he mentions it about every three <laughs> minutes. Um, but you know, they, 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 they've kind of they've drawn away from footy, and they're more kind of around just you know, kind of roasting each other mm. and um, trying to roast other players. And yeah, don't know about the introduction with Alex Rance on the show. I don't know if that's going to be the best thing for him. He yeah, seems and like, a bit weird. And because it is steeped in that kind of like Australian larrikinism or whatever, mm. I think a lot of Australia has sort of moved on from that. I now think they as have. Well. Yeah. They have. Look, they won. They won an award. I think they won. A Logie a couple of years ago, and 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 they they have they've had had a couple of good seasons, but it's so repetitive these days. And uh, mm. you know, now Gary Lyon's not there, and there's no stretcher. It's kind of uh, all the jokes <laughs> have gone. You know, he was a big source of jokes, but um, yeah, it's um, it's a bit disappointing. Uh, we go to next game in Tassie. In Tassie, We've... now now we must remind you before before we get to this game. Last time the Giants played in Tassie, they were blown away by about a hundred points in their second ever game. In their second ever game. Jesse Cameron did kick five and got the Nabla Star nomination. He did, he did. But this time it was the Giants, well, ran away in the end, as good teams should. As as they should, as they um, should. 109 to 67. But five, 15 goals, 19. Bad mm. kicking is the story of the round, actually. It is, it is. A couple of honourable mentions. Josh Kelly. The $9 million the, man. The million dollar <laughs> man, the $9 million man. Well, was it a, was it a 10-year contract? Nine, Nine years? Year. Nine well, I think it's a stupid move from both, both parties if it happens. I mean, look, he's... He, he's a sensational young player, but that's the thing. He's a young player. Yeah, you don't give him and a career-long contract at that age. 
And North Melbourne, I don't quite know. They've been criticised a lot about what exact direction they're going in with their list. Um, look, North have been good. Like they, they, they have lost their first three games, but they have looked competitive. And a lot of people thought they were going to look a lot more flatter. They've looked all right. Last week, they lost They lost the game more than Geelong won it last week. That's right. Well, same That's with Melbourne right. this week. We'll get to them as well. Um, let's talk about probably at the time it was the upset of the round. I was like, the round can't get more upsetting than this. That's right. The Tigers, the yellow and black this army. This is great. This we're is great. Out in force with this a nice beautiful. win in the wet. Yeah, and then that's the big thing. Um, you know, in front of a home crowd at the MCG, the Tigers have been poor in the past, and they've they have pulled out some pretty dismal performances at the G. But this was this was one for the Tiger faithful. I think the Tiger faithful really drew them through this game. And um, there is there is a player, Daniel Rioli. Has he lived up to the name or will he live up to the name? Oh, he's getting, he's he's getting, getting quite there. nice. He's getting there. Look, look, he's getting to that delicious stage. Right well, he's, now, he's, 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 nice he's medium, medium rare. Steak, that nice that's right, steak. that's right. It, it's juicy, but it's not quite delicious. Yeah. So, so we, we're still going to gonna hold our judgment but on we'll him. We'll talk about who is delicious at the moment. Mr. Out of Contract, Dusty oh, Martin. Ho, ho, ho. Nice 40 touches Smoky. and two snags, Smoky. if you don't mind. Smoky, including an incredible checkside goal. I've, oh, it's unbelievable. Um, he, he's he's in Brownlow contention. Oh, definitely. And, and it's only been three rounds, but you could definitely say that. Like, he would have polled three votes the last three weeks. That's right, that's yeah. right. Much like Dangerfield, him, Dangerfield, and I think Ollie Wines are looking like the absolute oh, like Smokies Clayton at the moment. Oh, he, won't the, he won't win well. the Brownlow, but... Look, I uh, probably won't be able to maintain it for the whole... He'll probably taper off a little bit, but he, he's he got potential oh, for the future. Don't rule out the Nola. Bont as well. Oh, and the Bont. Well, he's been a little bit quiet lately, but as we know, mm. with the Bont, doesn't need many disposals to be effective. So, very, very big for them. And this was a big game. Eagles were looking good. Eagles have been, you know, have been very good so far this season. And uh, they kept um, Sam Mitchell relatively quiet. Still got a fair bit of the ball, but didn't wasn't as effective. But, yeah... Really unbelievable. I'm it's also in the family about, name. Uh, also about West Coast. Um, Josh Kennedy, big Josh Kennedy. Something that, you know, forwards like to hurt Carlton. They do. Betts. They do. Yeah, I'm um, not, you know, oh, what's, his, um, what's his name? Garlett. Yep. And Kennedy. Um, he only needs 62 more goals to take over Peter Strimmage's record of 514. Peter Strimmage. Oof. So he, he is going to, he could potentially become the all time high highest goal kicker like at the West Coast He won't Eagles. beat the Pavs 700, but you well, know. Well, well, well as, far, as far as the tally in the West, he might not quite beat the great Ugh. man, but um, I'll tell you what, very, very good performance mm. by him, and yeah, kicked a, kicked a two goals one on the weekend, Actually, so, you know, still still pretty quiet for his standards, because he can Ooh. kick 14 some weeks, so, but uh, well done to the Tigers, second on the ladder, yes. looking very, very good indeed. Um, Melbourne. Melbourne. We'll be kicking themselves. We'll be kicking themselves. Oh, they, they had the game won. They could have had the game one at three quarter time. With like, could have been an eight goal lead. They could have. And my they mate mentioned me smashed saying, the inside fifties, fifty eight to forty six, mm. and that's and that's quite a big total. But two players before this game even started were out, being Jordan Lewis and, and Smokey Jesse, Hogan, Smoke and Hogan, <laughs> uh, quite literally. And um, you know, I think that might have done. Some, they might have done a bit more damage. And throughout the game, someone else was gone. Oh. <laughs> For all those out there who had him as your captain in Supercoach, first and foremost, good idea because, you know, he probably would have beaten the Geelong Ruckman, but down with a pretty serious-looking Yeah, about 16, injury. they say he could be back by. And so it's oh, going to no, hurt they've, us. They've come out and said he needs surgery on his hamstring. Mm, it's so not good at all. eight till ten weeks, yeah. Melbourne yeah. are reporting, which isn't good for um, Max Not good Gorn. at all. But even so saying that, gone. Gone. Melbourne, without Max Gorn, should have been up by eight goals at um, three-quarter time. My mate messaged me saying... Geelong, you know, Geelong's playing terrible. We use other words, mm. but we'll say terrible for this program. Um, and I go, nah, Melbourne's missing too, much, too many opportunities. Geelong will come back like they did last week against the Kangas. And thank you, thankful for Geelong. They found their third player. They did. Um, we have um, Mr. Mental. How Mr. good is Menzel he? Is Coming back brilliant. from all his ACL injuries. Four Absolute goals. Absolute gun. Absolutely crucial at the end of the day. And that was the margin at the end of the day. Mm. Um, so that was very, very good. Uh, another man we should mention, Brandon Parfit. I think it's Parfit. 20, 23 disposals. Played a very, very, very nice game. Kicked a sausage roll as well. He was very good. So look out for him. He's very cheap on Supercoach. So get him in. Um, but of course, Joel, the Dangerwood again. Combined for a huge over 50 disposals apiece. Um, and Joel Sowell got 37, Paddy 36. And uh, three goals to Paddy, if you don't mind. And uh, a goal to Joel Sowell as well. So four goals, over 60 disposals in between them. 
Are they the best couple in the AFL? I think they are the best couple. They would in the have AFL. the most beautiful kids if they had kids. I mean, originally it was probably Chris Judd and Rebecca Judd, but this is the next best thing. I think this oh, is. This they're is just like, gorgeous together. They are marvelous. <laughs> um, so that was a big win for the Cats and. Uh, Eddie had stadium again, a bit doom and gloom. Yeah, we'll head to a song and we'll wrap up the rest of round three here on the Sports Desk on Sin 90.7. You're listening to the Sports Desk on Sin 90.7. Back with the second part of round three. And we'll start off the with a showdown. showdown. The showdown. Wow, this is the first time in history that these two clubs have been one and two on the ladder and they've came up against each other in what was looking like one of the most epic showdowns in showdown oh, history. It was, it was a good showdown, though. It was a good showdown. And, of course, the Adelaide Crows, they uh, they did it again. Proved the 42nd edition of the South Australian rivalry. And the Crows, in front of a huge record-breaking crowd of 53,698, if you don't mind, um, that was the biggest crowd um, for a showdown and any game in the AFL for Adelaide Oval. Isn't that huge? Oh, it's absolutely massive. It's massive. But this was a big game, and the Crows, they just found a way to, to clutch the big moments. Texan Walker put the icing of the cake, kicking it from about, I think it was about 70 metres out. It was an unbelievable kick. That was a buddy-like kick. Yeah. You know, he's just like, you know what, I'll kick this. And he just went bang. But uh, a couple of big performances in this game. Matty Crouch did very, very well, 32 disposals. Um we should mention that his brother Brad is uh, playing oh, in, killing the, it in the is reserves. Killing, I think he got what forty disposals yeah, in this a Nice two point win in a nice two point win for the Crows as well. So they're doing very very well. Rory and uh, Sloan, the probably Sloan. the most boganous looking man you'll probably ever see. Tell you what, he loves. You got to love the blonde hair, dude. You know, we, we, but we've been talking about. We've been critical of haircuts all morning. We've been talking five should get it, get rid of his do. We're talking Cam McCarthy looks disgraceful, but Rory Sloan, he can wear a do. He can oh, wear he can. a beautiful bit of blonde locks as well. He is like the Goldilocks of Adelaide. <laughs> Coming up again with a nice 31 touches. One goal, if you don't mind. Taking out the showdown medal. I think it's called the showdown medal. I don't know what it's yeah, called. Yeah. Um, the Koshi yeah, medal. The Koshi medal. <laughs> the Koshi medal. <laughs> I think that's only oh, fair, isn't it? <laughs> they actually do. Yeah. Proving that Adelaide don't need Dangerfield. It was, a nice, it was a nice breakup. They really they stay friends afterwards. They really did, unless mm. unless if my predictions could come true, in round 11, mm. Geelong and Adelaide play, and they can both stay undefeated. That wow. would be an absolute massive game down dream. in Geelong. Is it down at Geelong? Down in Geelong. Well, you see, Adelaide haven't, have kind of... Uh, Geelong have had the wood over Adelaide the last couple of the games. Had so over. In Geelong, the, 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 danger wood, the danger wood over them, you know. <laughs> so they've got to be wary of that. And I think Adelaide, they're looking like a whole new side this year. They're really looking uh, rejuvenated. They're 3-0 three, they're three and they are just going oh, to they've continue got the poor to get better. Next week. And Oof. I'll tell you what, if it's going to be anywhere near a dry game, the Dons, just pencil them in because another forward went down for the, for the Crows. And I know they have no problems kicking big scores. But uh, it was um, it was what the brother's name um, from Mag- um, Ma- Ma- yeah McGovern McGovern no, that's it. McGovern he, he went down and uh, did his hammy so he could be out for a fair while. Oh, Li- um, what's his name? The one who punched the lungs as well. He's gone. He's out. Oh, Jenkins uh, Josh might come Jenkins. back next week. But Jenkins might be back, which would be really uh, really great but for us. If Walker doesn't get you, Lynch will get you. If Lynch doesn't get you, Charlie Cameron will get you. If Charlie Cameron doesn't get you, the yeah, bets. The bets. So and if they got, don't get you, then someone in the midfield will. They've got so. the most dominant forward line probably in the AFL. That's right. And, and and a lot of their half backmen can also kick big goals as well. So that was big. But I think the moment where the game changed was Port, they absolutely charged out of the uh, gate. They kicked uh, the first three goals before Adelaide booted the next 10 out of the 13, uh, including six in a row between the second and the third quarters. That was where the game was wide open. And uh, Adelaide, they are looking the goods. The only thing that's, uh, I think, the issue of Adelaide at the moment is their slow starts. Against GWS, they're behind. I don't think they've been in front a quarter time in any of their mm. games. Which, against a team like Geelong, if they go up and play Geelong, against the Doggies, against mm. maybe a, a different Giants team, it will be a completely different story. It will be a completely different story. Now, let's get to the biggest oh. game of the round. The biggest upset of the round, in my opinion. The Dockers can play fast, free-flowing footy, How can't good they? was that start? It's delicious. Would they kick the first four goals? Yep. And they just looked so, so good. Your players were nailing them from all over the place. And uh, your run and your carry was just sensational. 
Well done, Dockers. It was a good win. It was a really... I, I've said to a few people, um, apart from probably our um, qualifying final winning mm. Geelong in 2013, this is probably one of my favourite wins as a free supporter. This is great. And that to was, do it so early in the season yeah. as well against such a big club in the Doggies. Well, we're the only team to beat the Doggies. <laughs> exactly. That is correct. Don't that you, is correct. You, you are the first team since... Wait, Frio. Since Frio <laughs> to beat the Doggies. Yeah. You seem to be the only team that can beat them at the moment. Um... I just think, I, I remember going to my little brother, was, um, Doggy's got in front and my little brother's getting annoyed. And I go, oh, I'm not even mad if we lose this game. We've, we've showed something that we haven't shown in the first two games to heart. That's right. That's right. And I think as well, you guys were just so hard around the ball. And particularly when I watch the Doggies, they are so good at getting those quick handballs out of the congestion and get the ball chained up and moving forward. One thing you guys were doing was the manic pressure. As soon as a player would get it, including the Bont, who always seems to have so much time, as soon as he got it, they were just wrapped up. Oh, this I is think the Freo Blakely of old. did fantastic on This Bond. was the Freo of old. This was the Freo that used to bring that huge pressure and you could never get the ball out. But the way you were flowing it as well is the new Dockers. I like it. Oh, and one, one thing that made me happy last week, I mentioned that Freo was the only team not to uh, have a multiple goal kicker. Mm. Walters, Crozier, Mundy, Kirsten and McCarthy, if you don't mind, kick more, more snags than there are with Bunnings. There you go, there you go. More than what a Segway could pick up. And, and I'll tell you what. Crozy with the goal, probably one of the goals of the year, with that beautiful Crozy snap. Was, oh, wasn't that Kiss the jumper, which brings me to an issue, actually. Oh, here we with go. With the Dockers. Here we go. You can't kiss purple. Not that, is the fact that you've got Iberson, Johnson, Fife, Mundy, Sanderlands, Crozier, Sheridan, Langdon, um, Blake, Blakely, who else mm. do I have? And there's two more players that are out of contract end of this year. Whoa. So how many was that all together, Lee? That's 11, That's in, that 11 game, in that game alone. In that game alone, 11 players out there could potentially be finding new homes. I know we're in round three and, you know, it's still early on, but we need... we need Five, if five signs, he'll sign June, July, maybe even early August. Mm. If he doesn't sign, he's gone. He's gone, you After think. that, it's safe to say. Um, we got to get some of the young players signing. That's uh, right. Watching, you got some very watching good this talent, team, but... I was like, if we any chance to win a premiership, these are the players we need. Mm. We need this team. Granted, you know, Johnson and probably Lee Spur, Sandilands and Mundy won't be a part of that premiership team. Mm. But I think, especially Mundy, we should sign on for another year. We can't lose good old Barra. Absolutely not. Under no, no, pressure. Can't, can't kick, get rid of kick, Mundy. Kick to sealer. Something he's just done his entire career. That's right. Very good, very good old player. Brings a lot of experience and uh, always gets the job done. Always finds mm. plenty of the footy. I do think you've got the caps here. Fortunately, probably a few years too late. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know if we did win the 2013 flag, if we did win, um, Pavish was going to give it up and Mundy probably would have capped in the Zen. But I just think, right. yeah, poor man. Poor man. Go to Sunday. Another, Let's go to Sunday. Another honourable loss in Brisbane, but uh, there'll become a time they, where it's, you can't say that anymore. They are having some good losses, I've got to say. This is a team that everyone expected to be the very, very bottom of the ladder, the Anchors, and they have just been outstanding this season, all led by the great man in uh, Dane Beams, who again kicked some big goals from outside 50 oh, and again had 30 disposals. For the MVP um, Captain of the Year award. Oh, without a doubt. And uh, that, as I said, that sausage roll and, and just really hard around the footy. Eight tackles, that's... Uh, that's an outstanding amount of tackles. But it was the Saints. They were pretty dismal. They they, they did kick away towards the end, uh, winning 14-23-107 to 11-10-76. But it was one moment that really, really highlights this game, and it was Lee Montagna, the old head, the experienced oh, head. It. We love Joey. We love Joey. you got to love Joey. He did, he did a moment where he got a handball from Luke Dunstan, and he was in the goal square. No one was around him. So he thought, you know what? There's no players around me. There's about nine minutes to go in the game. Nice I'm going to, I'm going to go. T- yeah, I'm going to soak up the clock. So he literally stood in the one spot, just waited for the umpire to give him the, give him the go. He bounced the ball, waited. Pretty much as soon as the Brisbane player won in, he just kicked the goal. Now, do you like the look of that? Oh, I love it. You love it. I love any part of cockiness. You know, you know what I think, and this is my theory behind this. You remember when St Kilda lost to North Melbourne a couple of years ago, where Mason Wood kicked that goal, yeah. and he just waited. He waited for the for that stop clock to just run down to zero, and then he kicked the goal. I reckon Lee Montagna's going, this one's for you, Mason. I'm just going to stop here. I'm going to wait. It might not be a good look, but I'm going to do whatever it takes to win the game. But Richo, Alan Richardson was not happy. No. If, you, if you're a good lip reader, I'll tell you what. Oh, um, he, said, he said, why the something? Do why the something that? or other? Why what? on this sunny, beautiful day in Melbourne would a man stand in the goal square and take a bounce? <laughs> 
when there's no need to You do... are a great person. <laughs> you are a great person, Joey. You're coming to my house this week for dinner and we're having a spit roast. That's exactly what's going to happen. Um, oh. We're going to head to another result and uh, this one makes me sad. And, oh, but, um, da, 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 I've got to I've got da, swallow, da, da, I've gotta da, swallow da, this. I've got to swallow this. We are the Navy Blues. Yes. Well, when we say Navy Blues, we mean very, they were very, the blues this week. very Navy Blue. Like, what was this? Lucy, what is this Guernsey? You've got a bit of intel into the Blues. Well, apparently this Guernsey, it's called the Blue Out Guernsey. Guernsey? <laughs> I don't understand <laughs> it either. And the what thing behind, the, it's the Blue Out Guernsey and it's a tribute to the suburb that sustains them. Or that was the tagline or something weird like that. So it's a tribute to Carlton. I like it. I like, I like which it. Which is, like, nice, but I still don't understand how going all navy blue was a tribute to Carlton. Oh, so but anyway. I, I just think it's like, hey, Jersey, hey, money, I think could be a reason. Yeah, I know, but like heaps of people, they were into it, except for my dad. My dad goes to Essendon as mm. well, and dad was just like, what's up with the jumper? You can't even see the see the emblem. And I was like, yeah, good point. But, you know, it's the blue out. That's right. What, blue what, out. There you, you go. should have gone to your dad. What was Essendon's performance? You can't see the future. No. <laughs> yeah, we should have we should have had a red out. We just go black. Um, <laughs> but this was a big game for one particular man, the skipper of Carlton, Marcus Murphy. Oh, he was outstanding. What a game. Again. This, what a captain's game. This, he notched up his third straight... 30 possession game. Something he hasn't done since 2012. And Brendan Bolton put a lot of pressure on him before the start of the season. He said, this is going to be the season where, you know, we really see the best of Mark Murphy. We see his old form, his form of old. And he kicked this amazing check side goal. And that was the moment I knew it was over. The game was changed. I knew it was over. And, and, And although the Blues are only one point in front of that stage, on wet weather games, Essendon can't play wet weather. I have... I have said this before. I'll say it again. Um, I think the problem with Essendon's performance in this game was we just we just didn't really have that same kind of chemistry that we were the first two rounds. And I think, as John as John Worsfold said in his press match conference, he said that Essendon are at that stage at the moment where it's going to take a couple more weeks to gel, which is absolutely understandable. But yeah, no, we can't we can't play we can't play wet weather footy. Carlton don't score big scores, so this definitely um, was in their favour. And uh, a couple of the youngsters played very well as well. Tom Williamson played a very good first game. And uh, also a couple of the GWS players played very well. Uh, Plowman was great. Uh, Marchbank was um, very solid again. And as you said, Paddy Cripps, uh, his tackling pressure was uh, brilliant. And you can't win a game. You you shouldn't win a game when the scoring shots are 22 to 12. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, Inside 50s are 60 to 37. Yep. Um, Thanks least, for reminding me, Liam. On the bright side, at least the efficiency inside four fifty was thirty seven percent to thirty two percent. That's right. So I mean, Essendon had their chances. They played pretty good footy in the last quarter to almost claw it back, but it was uh, Carlton were too good at the end, and uh, the big man from Adelaide put the put the final nail in the coffin for Essendon, and it was a very good win it by was. them. And now this was the shock of the oh. round. Would you say the shock of the round? This is probably the shock of the last few seasons, actually. Now I just got to say massive. real quickly. There's a man from Coburg, played Coburg local footy for a very, very long time. And one man, you need league speed in Coburg. Trust me, you need league speed <laughs> need in league Coburg. Speed. You need a lot of league speed in Coburg. And this man has not only ran all the way from Coburg up to the Gold Coast, but he runs that field like no other man I've seen. To outrun Paul Pewopolo is a great performance. So, Adam Saad, hats off to you. And, Wow. A 10-goal turn by the Gold Coast Suns absolutely sunk the Hawks. And the real question is, guys, what is happening to the Hawks? Who cares what's happening to the Hawks? I'm just so happy that they're losing. Like, it's amazing. How good, like, not going on That's Facebook great. and seeing every Freaky single Hawthorne, Hawthorne like, <laughs> supporter just be like, yeah, Hawks, and blah, blah, blah. And if you say one wrong thing, oh, no, they come back and fight no, you. This, no, this is probably more darker times, actually. Get prepared for the... <laughs> Well, we won three premierships in a row. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, mate, that was 10 years ago, okay? Yeah, it was just, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you still got Essence Porter saying, well, we did win 2,000. Yeah, we've won 16 premierships. It's going to be, yeah, yeah. fantastic. Yeah, we won three in a They're row. Gonna oh, hear my God. They're going to remind us about that oh. still, but this if, is... If you listen quietly on a quiet winter night, you can hear it. You can hear someone go, <laughs> well, we won three premierships in a row. <laughs> right. This is the first time since 2004 an Alistair Clarkson's side, coach side, has went... Zip and three, which is yeah. just unbelievable, which we absolutely love, and um, they're on the bottom better. of the ladder now. I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not a big fan of Geelong. Um, no, I just don't like OP teams with the OP midfield. Yeah, but 
I'm hoping Geelong, a 10 goal smashing on Easter Monday. That would be beautiful. That's what I want for Easter. That would be beautiful. As well as actually West That's Coast. That's what I want for Easter. <laughs> That's what I want for Easter. That's what West Coast, um, West Coast have Sydney in Perth um, as well. So both teams could be 0 and 4. Mm. Sydney hasn't been 0 and 3 since 1999. Hawthorne hasn't been 0 and 3 and last and last since 2005. And there hasn't been many sides uh, since the turn of the decade that have been able to get to a grand final after being zip and three no. or zip and four in that regard. So Sydney have got a long road back. And as for Hawthorne, um, they're going to struggle to make the eight. But the four them, they're done. They are done. They're done. You can't, old, you can't pick up old. a star recruit like um, Tyrone Vickery and just hope <laughs> you're going to win a premiership <laughs> off his boot. Uh, well, one thing sure I had with Hawthorne, and it's a big issue, mm. especially most clubs who, who do this, and it was something we didn't have time to talk about last week, mm. Um, they were looking for. They look at Stephen May. They want to pick up Stephen May for next yeah. year. I don't think he's going to go after the weekend. I think he's like sticking with Gold Coast. Probably one of their best players as well. Probably well, a nice captain. <laughs> well, I did one of that. I oh, did, did, did the cut symbol. Yeah. yeah, very good. They stuffed yep. it up. Yep. Um, but they picked up. They picked up Brian Lake first. They well, did. Then they picked. Well, I'm sure they picked up Josh Gibson first. Then Brian Lake. Mm. One in the Premiership. Picked Josh up, Gibson's been dismal. Picked up Big Boy McAvoy. Big also boy. picked up um, James Foley. Mm. Uh, Gibson's probably gone at the end of the year. Burglar's probably gone at the end of the year. So is Hodge. Mm-hmm. Um, Forley is not playing his best year. Mm. Who do they have? They don't have a tall forward when Ruffhead leaves. Yeah. They yeah. don't have a Ruckman when um, I know Segler's out injured, but mm. when McAvoy goes, when they have no one in the, they have no young players in the back line. Mm. They haven't had it. And it's a big concern. St. Kilda's loving it at the moment where Hawthorne are. Oh, they're yeah. absolutely oh, loving it. Yeah. They're oh, probably like, they who do I want out. to pick number one? This, and, and we mentioned this on the show a couple of weeks ago. They potentially, if Hawthorne if if finish last they get the on the number one draft pick. they get the number one draft pick St Kilda. So I think um, St Kilda are going to be going to every single club this week and going, here's our plan to beat Hawthorne. <laughs> What's yours? You know? I just think, I just think it's a, and which one thing I respect, especially about the, not probably not the current long team, more about the, the first premiership. Mm. Where I think they only had, apart from Cameron Moon, who only played one season in North Melbourne, they only really mm. had one player from another club. That's right. And it's good when you pick up like a one or two players just to mm. fill a role, but you got to bring in young players to fill that yep. role when those players go. Hawthorne yep. has no one in the back one, they have yep. no tall backs. And you're absolutely right. Geelong have been a brilliant team of that. They've only missed out on the finals once within this whole 10 year period. They've missed out the finals twice, in twice. 2000, 2004. since 2004. So it's been, it's and, and they just continue to bring all these great youngsters in and. Their list managers are some of the best in the country. And as much as I give Geelong, I give Geelong a lot of flag, mostly because of Dangerfield, which it you is. shouldn't. I shouldn't really because Adelaide's doing perfectly fine without them. Absolutely. But um, they got Dangerfield, um, Henderson, Sarwood, Smith, who Smith and Sarwood were out of the team as well. Yeah, Zach Smith. Yeah. Um, then Zach Tui. Zach Tui as well. The Irishman. The Irishman. And they don't really have a lot of people from other clubs. They're doing no. quite well. They're doing very, very well. And, and they they bring in these youngsters through that are getting 23 disposals each week and kicking goals. So, you know, they're, they're going to be... Yeah, a lot of people are writing them off, but they're going to be good this year. There are a lot, there's a lot of issues for the Hawks, especially... I'm not. They certainly will be. This year, next year... Because once you lose the appeals, like a, um, a girl who's really good looking when they're young with bad personality, <laughs> but when they get older and the looks start to fade, they don't have anything. <laughs> Beautiful analogy, Liam. Yeah. Beautiful analogy. Um, that, talking, about, talking about beautiful, beautiful girls, Gary Ablett. <laughs> Gary Ablett Jr. He was beautiful today. Uh, he kicked he, he kicked a, two goals. Very good. Nice one from the goal square. Touches. Nice 36 touches. Obviously answered the critics, but, you know, still not playing his scintillatingly best football, but still he might get two, three well, votes well, in this I game. Honestly don't, I honestly believe, especially for Gold Coast, you'd be much more happy when you smash a team and Ablett has an okay game. Mm. Especially, they've got to prepare for next year. Abbott's not going to be at the club next year. No, probably not. Um, but if Abbott plays like he, that he wants to be there mm. for this year, they'll be fine. Yep, that's right. What, what I said annoys me about the Gold Coast was that this is how I know the Gold Coast can play. This is how I tipped them to play at the start of the year. That's why I had them in my eight. That's right. The problem is they're probably going to go to um, Melbourne next week and lose to Carlton. Yes, yes, that's that's what you expect. They're on a high now, but um, yeah, next week they'll probably yeah. struggle a little bit. We're going to get to a song, and when we get back, we're going to be talking about some Davis Cup, the NRL results as well, uh, a lot more pain for the Storm as well, and um, then we are going to wrap up the show. Yes, here on the Sports Desk on Sin 90.7. Sin 90.7 FM, you're listening to the Sports Desk. You're here with Liam, a very, very happy man, wearing the Fremantle colours, Michael, and of course our producer, Lucy. Wonderful producer this season, by the way, I must say. Oh, thank you. We've Fantastic had, job. This, this, by the way, is our last show, which is very, very emotional, but um, we've, we've had a great season. We've had great, great intel from Lucy 
with the AFL Women's yes. League, which has been outstanding. I do believe yeah. we were best, best, best coverage of the I, Women's I think, League. I think, uh, well, I think we were out of any well. broadcaster, we were the best. Yeah, and we were the best them. morning to do it as well. Just yeah. Well. Um, but no, excellent job by you, Lucy. Thank and, you so much. Um, we've we've had an absolute ball on this show as always, and uh, we're going to move to an NRL result. It was round six, and the Storm. Against the Sharks, this was the grand final rematch, and you're expecting the Storm to come out firing, you know, bitter from that loss. And that stormy conditions didn't help. And the stormy conditions certainly didn't help. It was raining cats, dogs, and just about everything else. I'm pretty sure I saw a crocodile land on I'm the field. I'm pretty sure I did. A couple of bricks there as well. Yeah. Nat Fife. Um, you know, everyone, everyone <laughs> Cam was... Cam McCarthy's hairdo. Cam McCarthy's hairdo. God, that probably distracted the Storm. <laughs> um, but it was the Storm weren't able to get over the line. They... Only scored two points in this game, and the Sharks, 11, they were huge. Um, there was a Sericaro try, I think that's how you say it, um, and it was a big game. Um, crowd of 12,000 at Amy Park, you know, obviously wet conditions. We're never going to get a huge crowd in, but um, the Storm were pretty dismal in this game, Lee. Yeah, um, coming off 5-0, five, five and the big news about Cooper Cronk, yes. um, leaving at the end of the year. Which if we had time, a couple I, of shockwaves. I, 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 I could have, could have, could have well that. happened. With my opinion of players signing contracts and leaving a year uh, into them, I don't like it. Don't like Neither it. Neither do I. And I, I can't believe that discussion of should that come in the AFL players oh, leaving mid season. Don't, don't do it. I think clubs know. I think Adelaide knew that Dangerfield was leaving. Mm. I think you know, Fife knows if he's going to stay at free or not. It's the same as a priority pick midway through a season. You don't need it. I mean. <laughs> You know, it, it, if Essendon had won last year, it would have been very helpful, but we didn't. Um, you know, we, we were there to suffer. You've got to go through the whole season. You've got to go through the ups and downs. But uh, Cronulla, they climbed to third on the league table after this looking, big win. Looking to be the first team to go back-to-back premiers since the Broncos. Since the Broncos, all the way back in the early 2000s, wasn't it? Yeah, late 90s, early 2000s. Early 2000s. It's kind of weird. So they they kind of went them. back-to-back. They, the Super League in 97. Mm, they won yeah. the Super League, but they were also an NRL season. But then That's they won right. the 98 Premiership. Mm, they did. So it's very confusing. It, it is very confusing, the different league crossovers and stuff yeah. like that. But regardless, they, they were the back brand. Back. They won. Yeah, they, they won. They were good. So, yeah, potentially the Sharks are looking very tough around the ball. And, uh, yeah, they'll continue to get better this season. Um, and getting to some tennis in the Davis Cup, the Aussies are absolutely oh, get him flying. Get curious. Get Kyrgios, Kyrgios, we love you, Kyrgios. You good thing. You beautiful, beautiful man. I threw your stuff up and we'll hate you again. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's right, that's right. The moment you use way too much aggression, then we're going to piss oh, you I off. did like his interview, though, meaning that he's a 21-year-old. He's still learning everything. He's still learning everything. That's right, that's right. I thought he was 21 last time I looked up his name a few years ago. But okay. Yeah, God. <laughs> so you can take a couple of digits of that in all, in all reality. But, no, this was a great um, victory all round in the Davis Cup. Uh, the Aussies smashed the Americans. We always love defeating the Americans. It's a very, very important thing for us to do. Just to recap the results, Jordan Thompson defeated Jack Sock. 6-3, 3-6, 7-6, 7-4, Eventually got there in the end. Nick Kyrgios defeated John Isner. 7-5, 7-6, 7-5, 7-6, 7-5. 7-5, seven, 7-5, five, seven, five, seven, five. Um, There was a lot of 7-5s in there, but uh, Nick Kyrgios got the job done in the end in three sets. And Sam Groff, and uh, this was in the doubles, Sam Groff and John Pierce, they lost to, lost to Steve Johnson and Jack Sock um, in three sets as well. And then Nick Kyrgios defeated Sam Query. The Americans do have some pretty handy players. They, they all seem to be ranked in the kind of mid-ish 20s, so they're going to they're gonna have their... Um, they're, they're looking to some of becoming pros in the future, but Nick Kyrgios was too good for Sam Query. Uh, 7 6, 6 3, 6 4. And Sammy Groff defeated the big serving Sammy Groff, defeated John Isner 6 7, 3 6. And uh, Belgium lead Italy 2 1 with the winner to play Australia. No, so Belgium did end up winning. And Belgium ended up winning. Yeah. There you go. Quick update. Ding ding. Satellites on. Yeah. And so Belgium will play Australia yeah, in the, make... the meat pie versus chocolate match. This is going to be great. <laughs> We're looking to make our first David Cup final since we won in 2003. It's great. Been it's great. It's a beautiful trophy. I, as well I do, I do say, it. and I, I do mean this, that I do believe Kyrgios can win a uh, Grand Slam. Probably a few. Oh, he'll win. Oh, he, he'll win a few Grand Slams. Oh, he, yeah, he has he is, the talent. Yeah. Oh, he definitely has the talent, and he's still so so young. I mean, you, you think of Federer and Nadal; they were winning some pretty big 
games when they were mm. quite young and they played against each other so many times. Um, you know, Kyrgios is still very young. So, you know, I think once he matures, and hopefully with age he does mature, not get stupid. Like a fine um, wine. That's right. Um, but he's got so much great potential and he's, a, he's, an, he's an uncapped talent and he'll just continue to get better and better and better. Yes, very, very good. The last thing we'll probably talk about before we head off on our merry ways into the yes. sunset. Yes. Um, is or the lack of sunset. Or... <laughs> In the, is the A-League. The A-League. Very good. Believe it or not, it's still on, people. It's, it's still on. It's unbelievable. It's like the basketball. They, they just taper off towards the end of the season. Yeah. Then suddenly it's like, oh, we've got the playoffs now. And then that tapers off too. And then it's just like, oh, it's over, by the way. Um, and it's just when one team's dominant like Sydney FC, it's kind of... Yeah, you know, City got over a little bit, a little bit boring. There was yeah. a Sydney drew with Wellington, Melbourne drew with Western Sydney, <laughs> Perth defeated Brisbane, and Central Coast Marys defeated Newcastle Jets. There was one round to go to the finals. It's um, um it's it's happening. It, it's it's getting exciting, and um, but they did have a big thing this weekend with the new video. They did assistant referee. I thought that which was very did make good. a call. Um, I'm gonna the... I'm gonna make a controversial call on the show Ooh. now. I, I have always believed this in sport. There should be an automatic draw of a line where the goalpost is, where the line is. So once you draw this alternative line, it's pretty much like a coloured in blue line. I think it's like a graphic thing that you add to where the goal is. Now there has been controversy in so many in in so many playoffs, especially in the World Cup. Especially in the World Cup. in the World Cup. I remember there was one where I think it went to the German. Uh, goalkeeper and it bounced literally on the line and then it bounced out the keeper grabbed it now on the replay after the goal had been disallowed it shows just an inch of the ball just over that white line and of course as soon as it's over that white line it's a goal now if they had my technology my graphically drawn blue line exactly where the line of the white mark is it'll then show the ball in real time and it, and if it, there is just literally an inch of that ball over the line, that is a goal. Mm. And like the, the AFL um, should have it as well. I what like are your the ice thoughts? hockey thing where it lights up and the ball goes in the line, through. I think that's good as well. Like Much like the, the zing bales. It, even like a thing, like it touches, if it goes over the line, it's like a zzz, like a That's right. Like a, just something that people know. That's right, because mm. it's happened as well in the AFL. Um, there needs to be maybe sensors on the goalposts, um, potentially, and also there needs to be a camera right on where the line is mm. because there's been so many calls in the past, particularly where there's a, there's a touch. The touch is probably the hardest it's one. Like you the, draw a line, there like, might be um, the problem. Oh, Jason Johansson's goal in the grand final. That's right. If the Doggies went on to lose that game, that would have been very it would controversial. Have, would have been a very controversial score. And, and, and that's that's where this particular yeah, technology needs to come mm-hmm. in. There needs to be more cameras. They have GoPros, for example. Put some Go, Go, GoPros on the post. Put some sensors in. Get this graphic draw across the line. If the if the FFA is listening to me right now, I hope you're taking notes. The soccer is definitely one of those sports where you could easily do something like that as well. Because mm. I feel like as soon as the ball goes over, if the goal tells you because you have this line thing or right, whatever, that's right. then you can't not like you can't can't disallow that kind mm. of thing. But it's always the case of like you know error. That's right. That's right. And I mean, I mean, human judgment at the end of the day is the one that we usually go for, yeah. not technology, because technology can be so inconclusive. But in such a day and age where there is so much technology coming through, yeah, when there's probably something that could easily like do that. That's right. It's I think so advanced now. I think this could definitely be introduced. So um, yeah, I'm I am gonna copyright the idea and um, come and speak to me after the show. <laughs> um, a league. Thank depends you. Depends how much money you make. I won't be a business partner. Just just yeah. depends if you make some money. Of I'm course. gonna be pretty hungry about this, Liam. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Liam's I'm gonna like, be I'm pretty hungry about it. For a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he wants you want to be my, my, my business partner. Dude. If you I make if you make money. If it's in the millions, only if I make money. If it's in the millions, I want a fifty percent cut. I tell you what. I tell you what. Much like the Australians. Um, do in, in soccer. They're, they're going to cheat us some way or another, <laughs> the Europeans. They're not going to like us here. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to lose a lot of money here. But it has been a big round of sport. A big round. Big round of sport. And uh, I think we've covered just about all bases. Yeah. I will quickly mention some of the racing as well because um, I my brother is a uh, big V8 supercar man. So um, Fabian Courthard uh, in his Ford... Uh, finished with a lap time of an hour 23, uh, 36.52 seconds. Fo- Scott McLaughlin came second in his Ford as well, an hour and a half. And Jamie Wincup was the third in 
the pole position there. Jamie Wincup for Holden, uh, just over an hour and a half as well. And Craig Lowndes as well, very familiar face in supercar racing. And David Reynolds in his Holden as well. So championship points. Shane Van Gisbert's on 384 for Holden. Fabian Coldhard is on 364 for Ford. And, of course, Jamie Wincup again. He's an ageless wonder. 333 for Holden. And so um, coming into Bathurst later on in the season, it's going to be very interesting to see where Holden and Ford plays. Yes, um, I was wanting to look at the Super Rugby results, but um, the Rebels didn't play. The Rebels didn't play. It's kind of a good thing because they've lost their first five games. So oh, they've been absolutely. If you can't lose if you don't play. Absolutely, it's always, it's always a good pitiful. model to go by. That's absolutely, all, that's all the time that's we all have. All we for. have time In for. Season today. one of the sports is on the Monday. We still have the Friday, but the Monday is the prime show. The Monday is the show that everyone show. tunes into, you know? This is probably why Lucy's missed most Monday shows on Fridays. <laughs> FYI. Just... You know, I have to be there on Friday to hold it together. Oh, yeah. 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 You but do I, say I, all the time that we have this. Yeah, I was like, That's you guys, right. I trust you guys, you know? We're I trust always you. here. The dream team. Oh, there's we there's always the a whole missing when you're not here, though. Oh, God. Well, we, we, need, we need the Lucy part of it. We need no. the Lucy part we of it. We do. You bring the loose to our show, you know? I'm the loose. The loose. The loose. The loose cannon. The loose cannon. I'm trying to think of what it was. Yeah. See, this is, this is why it works, you <laughs> this, guys. Is, this is why it works. You get me. We, we invigorate energy yeah. into the studio. And we, yeah. mean, we both got big months coming ahead, me and you. Certainly we do. We have a show. We have a new show coming up. We may as well plug it on the show. We're yeah, not going to no. release the information yet, are we? No, no. We, no, no, no we do. We will. Um, it's pretty much just the outside of sports. It's more That's an outside right. look on sports. But me and you won't do the entire season. No, no. You're I going, to, going Vietnam. to Vietnam. Vietnam Yen. Um, that's the French way of saying Vietnam. Oh. I'll be heading to... I don't, I don't know why I'm in French where I'm going now. I think some parts are French. Um, so I'll be going off to Vietnam for a couple of weeks. So I will be hosting our ve- brand new show on Sin Nation. So the way you listen to that is online. Um, and that's going to be broadcasted all around Australia on Sin Nation. So listen to that on Wednesdays. And that's going to feature me, Liam, and, of course, Jonathan Pertol from Jono Talks, which is going to be very exciting. I'm going to be talking about a lot of different sport. And all of those super coach fans out there, please tune in. We'll be giving plenty of tips, controversially better than Jock Reynolds. And just before you leave, I'm off to China for you. China? To teach You're going English. to China. Well, yeah, that, huge news. Well, that's Matthew. huge, Liam. Yeah. So you're going to educate them about just how successful Fremantle are? Yep. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliantly done. Brilliantly um, done. I want to teach them, um, you know, to say, good day, mate. I'm going to go, how much do you pay for a snag? And if, you know, they have are to get Are you correct. going to be going to Koshy's exhibition game? No, I'm, I'm actually in Gold Coast when that game's on. Oh, oh damn it. bugger. Bugger. No, I don't leave till June. I was so. going to say, you'd be the only Australian going to that game, I reckon. <laughs> Certainly the only Fremantle supporter. But yeah. it, has been an, it has been a wonderful show. Of course, listen to the Playmakers Vault on Wednesday with yes. Liam, me, and Jonathan. Also, check us out on uh, YouTube where the videos will be put up. And also, a very big thank you to our producer, Lucy. She's done a fantastic job this season. And, and yeah, well done. First you. time producing, right? Yeah, first time producing um, the show. But, like, also thank you to the two of you for uh, making my job very, very easy. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's been a really, really good season, and we've got heaps of new people coming yes, in next very, season. Very exciting. So it'll be very yes, exciting. Yes, our spots yeah. when we come back, well, from Vietnam and China, might be gone next year. Couple of yeah. couple of young faces, we love it. Yeah. Couple of young voices, newcomers, mm. newcomers. So they're going to be very, very cool, and they they're going to be spanning out on a lot more sports as well, including polo. I've heard. Oh, is that right? Probably not. But <laughs> we've we've, we've given like, them a is, we've, is we've set them a task. Yeah. Yeah. So all those water polo fans out there, get pumped. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for listening to another episode of the Sports Desk. Tune in on Friday. Yes, this is the Sports Desk on Sin 9.7.